Hi everyone, it's Eve Atley Blowitz from SparkGirl.com and welcome to the Spark Girl Book Club. I'm super excited to be here with you today in this online audio and video space and to be sharing with you one of our brand new Spark Girl Book Club picks, which is Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. Now, many of you will know who Jay Shetty is already. Uh, so, but for those of you who don't, I'll give you a little spiel. So Jay Shetty is obviously a former monk and he writes about that in his book, sharing his reason and the reason he wanted to become a monk who inspired him and what it was like to be at the ashram and be learning and be a monk of service. So that is heavily um, in his book, which is incredible because you can learn so much about what it would be like to be a monk. But more importantly, let's give you the lowdown also of what Jay Shetty does and is and is all about. So he is a storyteller, a podcast host of the number one wellness and health podcast in the world, which is titled and called On Purpose. And of course, in his book, he talks about how to find your purpose, which is incredible insight from Jay Shetty. So Jay Shetty had a vision where he wanted timeless wisdom to go viral. And he has clearly done that because he's had over 400 videos with 5 billion, billion views, which is incredible. And also in the short time that he's first book has been published he's sold a million a million copies so it goes to show you that wisdom is trending timeless wisdom and obviously Jay Shetty is really uh popping trending but that's because he's helping so many to uh overcome heartbreaks he he talks a lot about relationships in this book how to find purpose how to overcome your ego, how to meditate and feel good from within. There's so much in this book and so much that he does daily on his Instagram page, YouTube channel, and so many other streams. So why did I want to read a book about a former monk? Well, first of all, I have really loved over the many years reading books about monks and in particular, Thich Naha is one of my favourite authors also who's written, I think, now over 100 books. And actually, Jay Shetty references Thich Naha in the book, which really was a beautiful for me to see. And I just find it, to be honest, I actually wanted to be a monk. So what was happening, I'll tell you this story, uh, I was working in an office job in Brisbane and it wasn't very fulfilling. Now, I know females technically aren't supposed to become monks um, at the time, but I just felt like, what was my purpose? Why am I doing this? Like, there has to be a bigger meaning to life. I was going through this stage of why would I be going to work for money if the job didn't make me happy? Why are we doing things just for money? Um, so I was going through this really, I guess, spiritual path myself. But then it dawned on me that I would probably have to sit down in a room and just wear one lot of clothing. And actually, Jay talks about this in the book, where then you have to, you've got one other set of clothing but that's it and you have to get rid of all of your material things and literally give up the life you know so the friends um the going out the buying things the material things like the world that you know and then you have to go and devote yourself to service and and being a monk and um fitting in in such a way um and overcoming, obviously, the mind. So um, Jay talks about what it was like to actually meditate or do the chanting or things like that. So it's a really good insight into that. 
as you know, I did not become a monk. Um, I know there are women now and things are changing, but obviously I was just in a place of why do we buy material things and then keep, and then we're short on money, and then we're stressing out about money. Then we're going to a job that we might not like that fulfills us just to pay for these material things. So I was going through that kind of part of my life of like, what the? I don't know if you've ever been through that, but it's just sort of like, do we need all these material things? And are we in this cycle of doing a job we don't really like just to get money, to pay for things we like, but then we have it, but then we're upset when we have to go to the job to pay for the things we like. So I was just trying to make sense of all of that. But instead of going to a monastery, I just got into, obviously, reading books about Thich Nhat Hanh's, um, walking meditation and other spiritual books and things to help me dissect what was going on with me, which was simply I just needed to get a change of job. There you have it. So moving right along. So in this book, uh, Jay Shetty actually shares like how to find your purpose, how to overcome negativity, how to stop overthinking, why comparison kills love, how to use your fear, why you can't find happiness by looking for it, how to learn from everyone you meet, why you are not your thoughts, why kindness is crucial to success, and he shares so much more. But what I really love in this book is one of the stories he shared. So many of you might just think Jay Shetty popped overnight and he was this like viral speaker on the stage and, and he was on the Ellen DeGeneres show and then celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and all of them just love him, um, Will Smith and, you know, but what I really loved about his book is he talked about his first talk. So when he came out of the monastery, then he went back into college, university, he was doing a talk and he organised it and everything. So he turns up and no one turned up to his first talk. No one, like zero, zero people. So what I found fascinating was despite that, he still turned up again and he continued. So he continued and I believe uh, from memory of this book that one person turned up to his talk. So I felt like that was a really good lesson to learn where, you know, you might be watching Jay now with, say, 6 million people or 5 billion people tuning into his videos but it was really good to know that spanning over many, many years, his first talk, no one turned up. So I guess I want to bring that message to you because you might be doing a YouTube or maybe you're doing an IGTV, maybe you've started a podcast show, a blog or whatever it might be, and you do it and no one turns up. No one. Zilch. Zero. <laughs> And then you think, okay, I'm going to quit. I just hope that, think like a monk, Jay Shetty, that that story he shares in here, which you can read yourself, inspires you to just keep going and just to keep practicing, keep sharing messages that you're passionate about and keep sharing, like if you have a vision to help other people, keep going whether it's zero tuning in, whether it's now one. So it's kind of really cool to um, discover that. So I really love that. And in the book, of course, he talks about how he met his beautiful wife, uh, which I really loved learning more about as well. So it kind of goes from personal stories to then timeless wisdom where he shares timeless wisdom from other spiritual teachers, monks, um, people, like from all walks of life. 
and he references all of that in the back. There's also meditations you can do. Um, you can learn chants, how to understand like ego. Um, there's even information in here about how to deal with a breakup. Seriously, there's a whole section dedicated to relationships uh, because his audience is so obsessed with healthy relationships or uh, relationships full stop. So he really understands that and shares more on relationships. So he also goes a lot into purpose, intention, fear, negativity. And I also recall in here one of the practices they like to do is in particular and I think anyone can apply this to our lives, is not gossip um, or not waste our time on gossip, which uh, is incredible. So there's also a lot about gratitude, ego, self-esteem. So I won't go into the book in great detail because I don't want to give it away. But I really felt value for money. I kind of felt like this was a like two or three books in one. There's so much information, uh, value. It's of such great benefit. Like Jay Shetty is incredible when it comes to storytelling and writing and communicating wisdom in such a way that we can apply in our day-to-day -day life, which is pretty much what this is about. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Like, this, I love this. So chapter nine, gratitude, the world's most powerful drug. So uh, really, really beautiful messages. And considering like the way the world is, I think this is such a timeless book. It's so beautiful for younger generations to hear of being grateful or for all generations. What a beautiful message. Uh, what a beautiful message not to gossip um, <laughs> and um, to be of service. So before we wrap this book club chat up, I just want to share, I'm going to try and find it here, something that I really, 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 really wanted to share from the book. So I'm big on service, being of service, and I feel that's really what's got me through the global pandemic. So as soon as we all went into lockdown globally, the first thing I asked was, how can I be of service? How can I help others? How can I serve others? So I took the focus off me, which would have been, oh my goodness, I'm waiting on a COVID-19 test. And what I did was I actually Googled what COVID-19 was and everything that it could do to you. And then I probably read all of the worst case scenario and watched videos and it was very terrifying. But um, at the time I was in lockdown, I'd returned from Maldives to Singapore and I'd returned home. And I had all the symptoms, mind you, of what they were saying COVID-19 was. So I had to have a test, stay in home quarantine, of course. And then um, at the same time, of course, the reality hit. We couldn't go to work. Uh, like travel was completely come to a grinding halt. Um, so the whole world was like kind of turned upside down. But I remember just pausing for a moment and thinking, am I happy I've been to the Maldives? Yes, tick. And just revisiting things that I'd done up until then. But instead of focusing on me, like I can't travel, I can't do this, I can't do that, I, 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 I can't, 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 I was just like, okay, right. Reality is I'm not going to be recording travel shows in the Maldives. I'm in lockdown. I'm back in Australia because we had to return home. We were asked to before all of the flights come to a grinding halt and we couldn't get back. 
And the reality was, okay, we're all in lockdown. People aren't traveling right now, like seriously. So I was like, how can I help other people? How can I serve other people? And that's when it came up to me. You have your podcast show, record other guests, find out how they're feeling, like how are they overcoming lockdown what things are they doing to feel good from within how are they running their business from home and just start interviewing real people to get their self-care rituals and then how they're overcoming obstacles and anxiety and stress and this whole completely upheaval that happened which is about a year ago um, coming up in mid-March, so a couple of months away. But so if you're feeling like if you've fallen in the trap of me, 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 or I, 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 and you're feeling really lonely, what I really love about Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk, is it has a whole section like service is good for the body and soul. And then this is what I wanted to share with you in finishing this talk today. And this comes from the book, from Jay Shetty's book. Monks believe that the pillar of service makes our lives better in many ways. Service connects us. When you serve, it's hard to be lonely. High five. That was so true. So even though I was on my own, my first podcast show was with Jess, co-founder of Frank Body, and then every week moving forward, it's been with another incredible guest, and then of course with you, all of you um, tuning in, and then the podcast show and the community, um, the travel show community at Spirit Girl Travel and Spirit Girl. We all sort of like have really benefited from our guest words of wisdom and. The book club um so we have definitely not felt alone so in most scenarios you have to go out into the world to help other people that's so true but at the moment if you are in lockdown you can still help other people through the power of technology service amplifies gratitude service gives you a broad view of all that you have so true so true service increases compassion when you serve you see that the world needs what you have to offer so you might not think you have anything to offer but you do so whether you love to cook sew read books drink cups of tea make skincare products whatever your jam is you are available to service serve maybe you are just a good listener so you don't need to solve someone's problem but you could just listen and just be there for them service builds self-esteem helping others tells you that you're making a difference in the world you have a sense of meaning and purpose so so true so when I was creating the podcast shows and when I asked how can I serve others, it was to help others to feel good from within, help with their mental health, help reduce anxiety, help reduce stress. Uh, how do we process emotions? Okay, we're at home so much, we're not traveling. What books can we read? So it truly has been so fulfilling and I feel truly blessed to have asked the question, how can I serve? How can I be of service to others? So if you're feeling completely lost, maybe you've also lost your job. Maybe you can't work your business overseas anymore or do what you normally do because the borders are closed or international travels shut down. Just ask the question, how can I be of service? How can I serve others? And just see what comes up for you. It should be different for all of us, 
but that will give you a great sense of purpose, meaning, and also keep you super busy. So here goes. The ashram is designed around the intention to serve. And it's easier to live with this at your highest intention when everyone around you is on board. A life of service is far more challenging in the modern world. And we can't all follow the monks 24-7 model because basically the monks 24-7 are serving the community and serving others. But the monk practice shows us why and how we should adopt a service mindset. So this is just such a beautiful book, so, so beautiful. And look, studies have shown when we pursue compassionate goals, those aimed at helping others or otherwise helping to make the world a better place, we're less likely to have symptoms of anxiety and depression than when we focus on improving or protecting our own status or reputation. The act of giving to others activates the pleasure center of our brain. It's a win-win. This may be why those who help others tend to live longer, be healthier, and have a better over, overall sense of well-being. Oh, doesn't it just make you want to serve? Like, how are you going to serve others? Seriously, like, if you can't get to a soup kitchen, um, I always say that there are far more photos on Instagram posted every single day than volunteers at the aged care home. So I know with COVID-19, it's challenging to even get into aged cares due to the, the risk there. But you might just have an elderly neighbour or someone in your street or there are just so many ways to serve and help others. So I just love, love, love um, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. Super big girl fan. And we um, just, I just really loved reading the book. Now, I'm going to tell you, I tried to read this book in one week. I was doing a bit of like a gym quick, read quick, um, <laughs> one book a week challenge. Um, okay, I got a little bit stressed out trying to read this book in a week, and I'll tell you why. There's visualizations, there's activities. Um, there were things in here that you've got to stop and kind of do, um, like try this in the morning. So, my recommendation is just to take your time, go with the flow, read a bit. Uh, each day and enjoy the book process. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Because it was hilarious. Here I'm trying to read like Think Like a Monk, Slow Down, um, Reduce Stress, you know, like and here I was like trying to cram this book in like I was studying it. But um, I'm going to express gratitude Super grateful that Jay went to all of this effort to write this book and big shout out to his publishing house, expressing gratitude. Now that we've broadened the gratitude we feel internally, let's turn that gratitude outwards and express it to others. So on that note, I'm going to say I'm so grateful that you tuned into today's Spark Girl Book Club pick. And I'm so grateful that each week we get to hang out and I get to share books that I've read and just share a little bit more insight into the book and also a little bit of an insight into the author. Plus, I'm just super grateful that Jay Shetty exists. We're here alive during this incredible time here right now, you and I, such a gift such a gift that we have Think Like a Monk on the bookshelves or online and such a gift that in 2021, you and I are right here right now in this very moment. We have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to be of service. I can't wait to hear how you are going to serve others. I can't wait. 
leave it in the comment. You're probably serving people already. But I also can't wait to hear if you've already read Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk, what you thought, or if you are inspired now to grab a copy, do so. Take a photo, hashtag Spa It Girl Book Club, Spa It Girl, Think Like a Monk, hashtag Jay Shetty, and I will see you on the next Spa It Girl podcast show, book club show. You can subscribe now to this YouTube channel. Also follow Spirit Girl on Instagram. And if you want to tune into all of the Spirit Girl podcast shows, you can do on any app by searching hashtag Spirit Girl. So now that I've given you the lowdown, you can also subscribe at spiritgirl.com. And my name's Yvette Lee Blowitz, and I am the founder of hashtag Spirit Girl. So what is Spirit Girl? I know you're going to ask me that. I know. Okay. It's about being your own it girl at the spa, but if you're a boy, it's a spa it boy. And the being your own it girl or boy in your own life, creating the life you want, being your true authentic self, and just showing up as you are. You are enough. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're the best. You can be your own it girl or it boy of your life, either at the spa, at home or anywhere. On that note, I love you to bits. Bye for now.